Okay, it's time to put the final bits of code together and that's going to happen back in our main program again and this is where we're going to bring in our mesh and draw it so from glapp.mesh import star then the init is the same as before now the initialize this is where we're actually going to construct our shader program from our two vertex shader code files that we've got there so self dot program id this is where it's actually going to happen equals create program now this is the create program sitting in utils and if you want to see what it does i encourage you to open it up and have a look in there so create program now we're going to pass through these files and feed them in at the same time so we want to do an open and we want another bracket and we want shaders forward slash and this is the uh, vertex shader first so it'll be vert dot vs like that and then dot read outside okay make sure you get your brackets in the right spots and then open shaders frag dot vs dot read like that okay now then after we've done that it'll be self dot screen plane equals mesh self dot program id pass that through and then finally all we need to do oh and make sure we spell that the same as up there and in display we will actually call its draw so after clearing we're going to go gl use program so this will load in our program self dot program id so if you've got more than one shader from different things of course it's not going to work with a single plane when we're doing shader toy things in the course that this is sort of coming out of we draw multiple objects with different shaders so um, that's when you would swap and choose your glu's program uh, we will now create res ID which is going to be a resolution because we still have to pass that through to our frag so GL get uniform location from our self dot program ID and we're looking for I resolution and then GL uniform to F res ID self dot screen width self dot screen height and then self dot screen plane dot draw phew okay we are ready to try this out now i think i might cry if this doesn't work the first time um and chances are there's going to be an error somewhere in here but we can fix it press play yep okay so now we've got errors and i'm going to solve these in the video so you can see what's happening i'm getting a use of undeclared identifier frag coordinate. now i know this the frag coordinate is the um texture values that are meant to be coming through from our vertex so from our vertex they're coming out of our vertex as these uvs here they're going into frag here as uv but they're actually called frag coord down in the main so if we come down into the main and i think i said earlier don't change any of this code and i've broken my own rule but here's frag coord down here um, so this is actually uv and you might find that it's actually called frag cord. This is a GL frag cord. Don't change that. Okay. We're just changing this UV one here. And that's probably the only spot that it's going to be in. Okay. So a frag cord or whatever this was here is the uh, UV value that's coming from the vertex into the frag. So just check what that's called uh, when you bring this across here's our i mouse value we've got our i resolution values and okay we're ready to go again so let's press play and bang okay well that's 
pretty good considering. And if you move the mouse from side to side, you actually turn this around. Now, do you remember how I said that you would speed this up? Well, you can go in and change the speed in here for this timer. You might also, if you can get away with it on your computer, um, and you have to appreciate that that's a pretty labor intensive simulation. I mean, that's those clouds. There's no image in there. It's all mathematically generated, but it's limited here to 60 ticks, so 60 frames per second. You might want to put that up to 120, play around with that. But anyway, that's one of the values, but the most that this one here is going to do is control the actual animation speed that you're running that at. So if you wanted to slow that down a lot, you don't delete it like I just did. You can make that number even smaller and then press play. And now you'll see it sort of very, very slow. Okay, so it's not my computer being slow. It's just the fact that I now slowed down the whole simulation and you can sp speed that up to whatever you feel it should be like. Okay, so that's it. That's how to get shader toys, shaders from shader toy onto a plane in Python using OpenGL. I really hope that you enjoyed this and that you'll go ahead and try other shaders. And if you do, please come and post the pictures in our Facebook group for a holistic 3D and share them with the other students because there's so many really nice things in Shader Toy that it's just great when you get it to run this way. And I'd also encourage you if you really enjoyed what you've just created that you learn more about OpenGL in Python or just OpenGL in general and definitely some Shader language will never go astray. Okay, thank you for listening. If you'd like to support our work, like us on YouTube, visit our website holistic3d.com, look for our courses on holistic3dlearn.com or support us on Patreon.